Today, we're gonna compare a fancy all-in-one liquid cooler with all of the bells and whistles to something a little bit more basic. But before we get into that, we've got a sponsor for today's video. Today's sponsor is World of Warships, a free-to-play game where you can command a selection of over 300 accurately modeled Second World War battleships. These ships are divided into several classes so that you can fight the way you want to. If you want something small and nimble so that you can tuck in and out of battle, a cruiser is probably for you. But if you like something bigger, manlier, and more heavy hitting, I'd probably go for a battleship. Mmm, look at that ship destruction. Here's another shot of some ships being destroyed. Look at that one, tank a whole lot of damage. And all of this destruction is free to play. Use the link in my description to download the game, and if you use the promo code READY FOR BATTLE 2020, you'll get free 700 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days premium account, premium ship USS Charleston with stars and stripes camouflage, and the Japanese premium ship Ishizuki. And this will be more than enough to get you started on the route down battleship destruction. Mmm, look at that fire. So let's compare the cheapest 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler that I could find on Amazon to one of the best options in this size of cooler, in my opinion. Let's get straight into the peasant cooler. The up here, 240mm radiator. <laughs> they really spent hours thinking of that name. This cooler, new on Amazon, costs $60, which is really not very much considering what it is. Although, at this price, you do have to make some sacrifices. In fact, you have to choose the color of the lights on the cooler when you buy it, which is pretty savage. The cooler comes reasonably well packaged in a fairly soft foam. There's nothing really to complain about here. Now, the first thing that I notice when taking it out of the box is that the tubes aren't very malleable. They're, they're pretty rigid, although the actual radiator seems like it's a decent quality, and there are only a couple of small nicks on the radiator straight out of the box. The cooler also doesn't come with any thermal paste pre-applied, but it does come with some in the box, and then it comes with mounting options for everything that you'd want to mount it to in 2020. Everything looks fine out of the box, except for the fact that the radiator fans seem like they're a very questionable design, because you can see here, they don't really seal around the radiator properly. Now let's move over to the fancy boy, the NZXT Kraken X53, which costs $130 on Amazon, making it just over double the price of the up here cooler. So let's see what it is that you're paying almost double for. The packaging does have nicer graphics on it, but functionally it's kind of the same thing. When it comes to the tubing of the Kraken, it is way more malleable than the up here tubing, and it's also got this kind of soft touch paracord material on it, which feels really nice. The NZXT cooler does come with thermal paste pre-applied, which does make installation a little bit quicker, but honestly, how much time are you really gonna be saving with that? The actual pump housing design looks really nice. It's got that infinity mirror thing that NZXT is known for. A really nice upgrade with this new generation of Kraken cooler is that this thing is actually rotatable. So it means regardless of what orientation the actual pump housing goes on your CPU, you can still have the NZXT oriented properly, which is a really nice touch. And then of course, it's got all the, the RGB action. Although one downside about the RGB is that it means you've got a lot of different connectors on the actual pump block here, which makes it more difficult to cable manage than the up here design cooler, which just has the PWM pump connector. When it comes to the fans of the Kraken X53, uh, they don't have any fancy lighting like the up here cooler, and I use the word fancy very lightly here, um, but they do seem to be designed significantly better for radiator use. As you can see, they kind of seal properly over the radiator. Now that we've done a very basic physical comparison, let's get into the test system and then see how these coolers stack up against each other. As far as test configuration goes, I wanted to use my Intel test system with a 9700K in it for this video. That CPU is mounted in an NZXT N7 motherboard, and I don't know if there was like nepotism going on or if the cooler just can't handle that CPU at 5.1GHz, which 
Now that I think about it, that one seems more likely, but whenever any load was put on the CPU, it would immediately go straight to like 100 degrees Celsius and then thermal throttling would happen. So I ended up changing it to my AMD test system with the Ryzen 7 1700X in it. That's also an eight core CPU, but with hyperthreading, so 16 threads, and then it'll be overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz at about 1.35 volts. And the test system will be on my test bed, i.e. just on a motherboard box on the table. I'm gonna use the same thermal paste for both the coolers. I'm using Noctua NTH2. I'm gonna test both the coolers in two configurations. The first one is in the stock configuration with its stock fans at 100% fan speed. And then I'm gonna slap some EK Vardar F4 fans on there. <laughs> I love that name. It sounds a bit like the cannon on an A10 Warthog. And those will also be running at 100% fan speed for the entire IDA64 run. And for both the configurations, I'm gonna be running the pump at 100% speed as well. So we're gonna see what max power looks like on these two coolers. In regards to the ambient air temperature, I'm gonna be keeping it at 22 degrees Celsius, and I'm gonna be measuring that right where the fans intake air into the radiator. And then finally, I know there are a lot of test parameters here, but I'm gonna use IDA64 running for 20 minutes per test on each configuration. And then I'll be using the T die temperature measurement in Hardware Info 64 as the final temperature measurement. And with that, let's see how these two coolers compare in their stock configurations. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fans on the two coolers, I think, because the up here design fans only go up to 1700 RPM and they go up to 2000 RPM on the NZXT cooler. And then not only that, but their design just doesn't seem optimal for radiator use. As far as noise levels go, that's quite difficult for me to test because I live on a highway next to three active building sites. So it's really difficult to get like a baseline noise reading, but I think because of the lower RPM of the fans, the up here design cooler was a little bit quieter. So now that we've seen how the stock configurations compare these two coolers, let's strap some EK Vardars to them and see how well they scale with some real badass radiator fans. This is a really interesting result because as you can see, the up here design cooler performs way better with the Vardar fans on compared to the stock configuration. Whereas with the Kraken X53, the performance is pretty much the same going from the stock fans to the EK Vardar badass fans, which is actually very impressive showing that the stock fans are optimized quite well for this radiator layout on, on the Kraken X53. And even with the help of the more badass fans, the, the two of those fans cost almost as much as the up here cooler itself. Um, it's still far behind the Kraken X53, showing that that new design of Acetec pump is really putting in some work here. So after looking at the performance, we've established that the more expensive cooler performs better than the cheaper one. Big surprise there. But there are a couple of other things that also come into play when buying something like an all-in-one liquid cooler. The first one is with the NZXT Kraken X53, it actually has a six year warranty, which is crazy. I mean, six years is a lot for a warranty on a power supply, let alone something like an AIO, which is pushing liquid through your PC. So that's very comforting. Whereas with the up here design cooler, it says it has a 12 month warranty, but I can't really find a manufacturer website, so I'm not entirely sure how you'd go about dealing with that process. I really would not trust this cooler in my system. And then there are a couple of other stuff like aesthetics. I think the Kraken looks better, although that's very subjective. And when it comes to the mounting mechanisms, the Kraken X53 also mounts nicely. Because of those really malleable tubes, it's easy to just kind of get the cooler where you need it to be. Whereas with the up here design, you really have to fight the pipes to get it to line up with the socket properly if you're mounting it in a case. And then there are other really small details. Like if you look under the screw holes of the actual mounting on the radiator, you can see the Kraken X53 has these little metal pads which protects the radiator fins from the screws going down into them. Whereas with the up here cooler, you are kinda on your own there. So for today's video, we have a pretty massive bombshell. Apparently, a $130 all-in-one liquid cooler is better than a $60 one. 
And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. Check out my Twitch stream, which will be later today. I'll have it linked in the description below. While you're down there, follow me on whatever social media you're interested in. And until the next video, bye-bye.